Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Hopefully, everybody can see me okay. Good morning. Okay, so today we are going to basically do an update. Donna and I have done probably, I think, three or four. I think this is the fourth live stream we've done together, or we will have done together. So we're going to bring her on, um, kind of do an update, go over the cases, maybe, you know, answer questions and just go in that direction. So let me go ahead and add her um, right now. Hello, Donna. How are you? Hi, Lauren. Um, hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning, everybody. So for those who might be new, um, maybe they're not familiar with either of us, I'll just give you a little introduction. So how I became acquainted with Donna and, and what she does as a psychic medium is uh, about, it was about two years ago, she was doing readings on this missing kids case out of Idaho. And they were the missing kids, JJ and Ty Lee. So if you're not familiar with that case, I recommend doing that and you'll be pretty darn amazed. But at the time, she was doing these readings, and I stumbled across uh, one of them. It was her first one that she ever did. That was when the kids had been missing for maybe about three months. And it was at the point when law enforcement was telling the mother of the missing kids, like, hey, you either show these children or, or else. It was like one of those, you know, demands. And so Donna did a reading on... on uh, January 31st, 2020. And this reading was so, oh my gosh, there's no words. There's really no words for it because six months later or about four and a half, five months later, everything that she said in this first reading she did turned out to be exactly what happened to these kids. So it's, I mean, just thinking about it, like I get chills all over again because I dismissed it, Donna. You know, I did. Um, I've told you this before. I dismissed you. I thought, oh, it's another fraud psychic. Oh gosh, whatever. And it turned out to all be exact, which came out later in court testimony for the uh, preliminary hearing of Chad Daybell. So this is Donna. She's done many readings on many different cases. She always seems to have her finger on the pulse. Just in Summer Wells case alone, so many things that she said back in, let's see, I think August 31st, she did that reading. They have come out to be pretty much exact, honestly, so many things. But we'll get into that here in a moment. So I'll just give you the floor here for a moment, Donna, if you want to. Okay. Um, yeah, the reading with uh, is about the Lori Vallow case, if you don't know. Now, once, once a a murderer has been caught, they tend to shift the name in the media to the name of the killer. But the mother, Lori Vala, was instrumental in murdering her two children. And I did see it. And, and, and I even had a hard time believing it myself. Like if my own deceased daughter had not brought Tylee to me, I wouldn't have believed her. I would have dismissed her as an errant spirit because they do exist. I'd be like, I mean, even as it was, I was like, nobody does this to their children. Nobody yes. props up their leg and barbecues it. Nobody does that. Oh, oh my God. What a pretty cat. <laughs> she actually um, just got shaved. I won't interrupt you though. Go ahead. Oh yeah. And, um, you know, even the first reading, I hope to be wrong. It's only, do you remember in the middle, I stopped it and I started praying. I yes. was so terrified because I was like, what kind of demons could have bypassed all my security, all my yes. angels, all everything to show me such crazy things that could never happen. Right. And, um, you know, Tylee just did more and more and more and was very uh, pushy about yeah. it. And, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, it was like, I'd be doing dishes and there's Tylee um, bent over my sink trying to talk to me real fast and yeah. my third eye's not open so I can't really understand her and I'm like wait till I meditate you know it's like that's how right. Tylee was and she was so pushy about it that you know I really tried to help her and yes. and by the probably third reading you know I knew it was true um that this is what happened not like oh i think this is what happened it's like okay they're showing me so clear this is what happened this is 
the most shocking case, yeah. you know, of the century to me. It's just mind blowing. It is. It yeah. Is, I agree. Yeah. And when I was in February of 2020, when I was meditating about should I be spending so much time on this case when the whole world's, you know, afraid of the pandemic and that type of things, and shouldn't I be helping more people? The spirit mm -hmm. guide female that I was meditating and communicating with um, told me that I was doing just what I was supposed to be doing, that um, these people had murdered children in the name of God. Oh, I know. And um, that was not going to be tolerated. And so that I was supposed to make sure their bodies were found. And then the other thing was that I was supposed to use that case to prove the afterlife to the world. Yes. And it's like, that's where my stumbling block is. Cause I'm like, okay, I'm on YouTube. I have limited, you know, visibility here. How am I supposed to prove this to the world? Right. So kind of that's where I'm at right now. And then that's kind of when, when I came on the scene and was like, oh my gosh, you have to hear this. This lady <laughs> saw these murders. You don't understand. And those were my first five videos. I couldn't believe that you in my opinion, totally solved those murder, that, that murder, you yeah. know, the, the missing kids specifically. And, um, and that nobody else was acknowledging that. I thought that was insane. Yeah. You they know? act like I didn't exist and they still are. I know. You know they still, they still are acting like I don't exist. It was I've had no, no appreciation whatsoever um, from yeah. the family at all. Yeah. And um. I would just leave it at that. You know, no, I, I, I got a, a letter from the police department saying, yeah. thank you, you know, and they, they've got a case to do. Obviously they can't throw a psychic in there as they have to find, no matter what I say, they have to find some kind of cooperating physical evidence to be able to present for a um, search warrant. Right. So it is what it is right now. Oh, I understand. I, I need to write a book to really get the message out there. Yes. Yes, I completely agree. I mean, if you could change my mind from saying, oh, being very dismissive about psychics. Oh, it's all, they're frauds. They're baloney. <laughs> you changed my mind. You changed the way I look at things, honestly. Yeah, and, if it's, if, oh, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. No, I was just going to say, and I think in our audience here, there are countless people who would agree. But go ahead. Oh, uh, um, yeah, yeah. Um, so one thing I want to tell people before I forget is if you go on my website, which is psychicserafina.com, and that's with a PH, there's a downloadable essay that's 79 pages long that I wrote to compete in the contest about who could prove the afterlife, which I did. I mean, scientifically, with the date stamps on the YouTube videos stating these, um, you know, there was probably almost a dozen readings, maybe 10 or a dozen readings before they found the bodies um, right. that is, is so accurate and so detailed it that is. in my opinion, it does prove the afterlife. The entire time I was saying, look, there's a teenage girl in my house and she's here with her stepfather and they're insisting this is what happened. They're insisting that people, mm -hmm. you know, follow these clues. And um, I don't right. know. Anyways, anyways, that essay 79 pages it's also what i uh, published on amazon and the reason i published it for now is not the big book i want to write but i published it just because it had been through so many hands so many judges so many this i copyrighted it before i sent it in but i just want to make doubly sure so if i do write a book no it's going to have a lot of gossip because i have talked yeah. in depth with all of chad's neighbors like the entire wow. block. <laughs> wow. You know, I have invitations for dinner if I come to Rexburg. So, <laughs> right. um, yeah. And, uh, and, and many of Lori's friends and family and things like that. So if I write a book, it'll include all that. But I just want to publish the essay for now for legal reasons, but it's free on my website. Okay. Donna, I have a video lined up. Um, okay. Why is anybody calling me right now? Huh? Okay. <laughs> There's a video lined up. I would like people to see. Um, it's going to be great, I think, to show. I think it illustrates just how amazing it is, that what you did. So I'm going to show that um, here in just a second. Let me line it up. 
And then we will go into all the details of the next cases to discuss. Let me see. Oh, here we go. Just a moment. Okay. Can you see my screen, Donna? Uh, yes. Okay, good. Did so you make a new, new movie? Photos, missing siblings, oh, sorry, what was that? I said, did you make a new movie? This is um, the one of you saw in that case. I want to showcase at least a little bit of it so people get the idea of how spectacular this was, in my opinion. Okay. okay. And then we're going to go from there. Okay. Okay, here we go. Let me mute out, though. The FBI has released new photos of missing siblings Tyler Ryan and Joshua J.J. Vallow at Yellowstone National Park. The siblings took a trip there with their mother, Lori Vallow, and their uncle, Alex Cox, just before they disappeared. The September 8th trip was the last time 17-year-old Tylee was seen. JJ was last seen at his elementary school on September 23rd of last year. Okay, what I'm seeing is a man and a woman and they're carrying um, these, one person, they're carrying one person, uh, wrapped in a, a black, um, it's black plastic. And it has ropes tied, like there's a rope tied around the neck, rope tied around the, you know, where the arms would be. Like they tied a rope about every foot and a half, you know, rope around the ankles, rope around the, but they're tying it. Seems like they, I don't know, that's just their burial way, what they're doing. And then it feels like um, the man is digging pretty hard there and then covering that. that it feels like it's the boy that was buried there observed. the first thing i observed was the black bag that was covered in duct tape that had had been removed from the area underneath the tree by the pond was placed on the table and you recognize that as the same black bag yes um, how did you recognize that the duct tape and the black plastic that had still had dirt all over he was i see that he was in his pajamas he had flannel pajamas and he um he was whining about something he, he must supposed to be in bed or maybe he was playing in his pajamas i i shouldn't assume he's supposed to be in bed but Lori's Lori has him there she's planning on doing this so it's not like she she just gets mad and does this it's just that she wasn't planning on doing it right that second. So what she does is she's got another one of these bags. It's more like a hefty bag. So she walks up like she's being real nice and she's like, oh, it's okay. It's okay, honey. And all of a sudden she just poof, whips that bag over his head so fast. He's trying to get this duct tape in the house. AJ's struggling. So nothing is ever as easy as she thinks in her imagination. He's pushing her with his hands. He's kicking with his legs. He's trying to resist. And so she's trying to push it down. So, so she knows, so she realizes now, oh yeah. So she's trying to take that duct tape to get with her teeth to get it. She can't get it. Some man runs across the room and that's what I don't figure. Well, he might show me because it felt more like Chad. I observed a small child uh, in red pajamas, red pajama shirt, red pajama pants, black socks that had the word Skechers in orange across the toes. I also observed a light and blue blanket that had been placed on top of it. Okay. When you observed what you perceived to be a child, were there, was there anything that drew your attention? Yes. Describe one of, uh, you describe for the court what drew your attention? the amount of duct tape that was covering the body. Okay. Uh, where was that duct tape located? On the head, arms, and... Okay. Uh, let's talk about the head area. Uh, um, when, when you looked at the head, uh, what did you observe you there? The head had a white plastic bag over the top of it. It appeared to be a normal trash bag and a red drawstring. Uh, it appeared to be the expandable type of trash bag with the waffle style pattern. 
on top of the head. Okay. Uh, and you mentioned duct tape there. How, where did you observe the duct tape? It was duct tape that was tightly wrapped around this way, tightly from his chin to his forehead area. Uh, several layers of duct tape tightly wrapped. Okay. We, uh, who was that little boy? Joshua Bell. The area measured about four feet by two and a half with a patch of weed growth shorter than the surrounding area, suggesting it was recently disturbed. Authorities used a backhoe excavator to pull back the top layer of sod, revealing a body wrapped in plastic and duct tape beneath several large flat rocks and pieces of flat paneling. The on-site anthropologist confirmed it to be human remains we now know to be J.J. Vallow. At, with Tylee, it was equally Lori and Alex. It wasn't only Alex and it wasn't mainly Alex. Actually, um, it was both of them. And um, at the same time, they both had this planned. They got Tylee to walk somewhere or do something. And um, Lori, it feels now like a metal pipe and, um, at the exact same, and Alex had rope. Like they planned it. They got Tyler. Like, 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 oh, come here. We want you to see the, you know, see this or whatever. And at the exact same time, um, Lori starts smashing her in the head, and Alex strangles her with a rope. And they are literally doing it at the same time. And they, they, they push Tylee face, uh, Alex pushes her face down. He's got his knee in her back and he's just pulling the rope as tight as he can. And she's, Lori is just continuously, literally bashing her head in. And one thing people really need to know, this, this, this lady is so dangerous. It's not even funny. It's unspeakable horror. I feel like you chop her leg off. I feel like that the girl is chopping her body up like a butcher would. There's a garage and off a building uh, not connected to the little house or the summer house. You know, it could be a permanent house, but that's the type and style and the feeling I have. That's all. There's a, the, the, the garage part is not connected to the main house. It's like considering an app building here in California or whatever. It has a workbench around three sides of it. And it feels like he had the daughter's body on that workbench and he's, he's literally chopping it up. He's got plastic everywhere, but it seems to me there would be like so much blood evidence there. I almost feel like the house, that's definitely built between the 50s and the 70s. I feel like it's a one story, but it could be now a two story. Like maybe someone came on later and added one more, you know, a, a bedroom on half the house or whatever. It might even still be painted two different colors. Like if, if the bottom story has one color of paint and then the, that addition has like still, they left it like wood brown where you stay in the wood or whatever, something like that. Smashing her skull with um, the butt of an axe or the handle part of an axe. It's just sickening. I see them starting a fire and roasting. It's like at this little summer home thing, and there's um where you could you could conceivably like roast a pig there. It feels like they're roasting a leg, like the leg of the girl. I swear to God, I can't. It's hard for me to believe how this could be happening in my mind. So before we even set foot on the property, this is the fire pit area. So from satellite imagery, similar to what this image is, this, this wasn't satellite imagery, I don't think, but similar to this image, we could tell that there was a fire pit on the property. We knew before we even set foot on the property that we could potentially find evidence in the fire pit. So prior to even arriving, I had already assigned two of my ERT members once we arrived to go to that fire pit and assess what we needed to do to process this fire pit because something could have happened here. Gruesome. I mean, he might have even used a sledgehammer to break some bones to try to make them like unrecognizable and stuff like that. Go back in. 
Yep. They're confirming this girl's body cut. They're confirming it's back past where they'll find the boy's body, uh, probably wrapped in this black plastic with the ropes, you know, tied around. And then you go up a little slope, not, not too much. It just kind of clears out, flattens out, not too much off to the right. And you see, like, it's almost like they're in the middle of the trees. There's like a field of ferns, like a, a thicket of ferns, if you would, or something like that. Yeah. Go towards the center of that. It's like he went right in the middle there and buried the um, one leg and the, if you find one leg and two arms, I'm telling you right now that they, they, they did eat that other leg. I'm not kidding. Seeing as we hit a, a bone, a bone, you know, sticking out of the ground and it's kind of leads into some uh, flesh. And at the time we, our anthropologists still can't make a determination if that's animal or human. And so the team starts trying to excavate whatever this is. And then eventually we're able to excavate a few pieces. The major piece ends up being a pelvic piece. Is, is that something that you recognize as, as being a pelvic piece? I was, I'll say possible pelvic piece, okay. piece, but I mean, a pelvic piece is pretty familiar to me. So I would say I could recognize it, but I'll say possible pelvic piece. Uh, we knew at that point we had found human remains. This, for lack of a better term, it was kind of a mass of dismembered human remains. Burnt, partially burnt. And so we did the best we could. It was kind of hard to recognize, like, what are we looking at here initially? You know, what, what is this? Mm -hmm. We know there's tissue here, there's organic matter here. And we just couldn't recognize what we were dealing with. But layer by layer, we tried to, we ended up just excavating all around this mass of human remains. And we ended up excavating all the way around it. And at the very bottom of this mass, we find, you know, this melted green bucket. And then to the bottom, the side of that green bucket, we eventually find a skull. And then to the side of that skull, we find a mandible with some teeth. And those are the significant things that you could finally see and recognize out of this mass. And so we did the, to the team, did the best they could to kind of excavate around this and kind of tell that story. And again, we'd stop every so often, take photos, take scans and document that excavation process, just like we did at the burial site one layer by layer. And then eventually it came the decision point of, okay, now we need to try to, to lift these remains out of burial site two. Authorities then turned their attention to this area between the red barn and a fire pit, an area we know now is the Daybell Pet Cemetery. The site correlated to several GPS pings of Alex Cox's phone on September 9th, 2019. Authorities methodically sifted through layers of dirt in this area. They found pieces of bones and human tissue, some of which were burned. All right. Can you guys hear me? The reason I showed that is because I want you to know that when I, when I backed on it, it's for a very, very good reason. She has incredible abilities. And that's why I ask her about these cases. And that's why I lean on her when it comes to these cases, because she always seems to get the drift of what's going on. And so that's why I wanted to bring her on today and just pick her brain about different things, you know, different updates and, and go over topics of discussion, you know, from her readings and things like that.